guys, it's Chris Pree with uh, SmartRealEstateCoach.com again for some deal structuring. This uh, deal I'm going to talk to you about is for a subject to property that we made contingent upon getting a buyer. Okay guys, so I'm going to go over this subject to deal with you here. Um, if you have questions on subject to especially, you want to chat with us especially if you're in the associate program already because there's a customized agreement that we did that is a purchase and sales agreement geared towards the subject to situation. Making sure all the acknowledgements, all the um, sign-offs, uh, there's no confusion with the seller. It's done as a regular closing using a HUD settlement statement. You know, we don't just go get the deed, although you can. Um, so we bring it through a normal closing. So I'll walk you through this one and, and, and see if it sparks any questions, okay? so. If you want to reference this one, you're going to reference uh, 22 third, okay, just for if you have to reference it, uh, questions and things like that. Okay, uh, source of this. This was an expired, and again, I'm going to make reference to all these in case you're new and or not an associate yet. The expired dialing process is what you should be using every single day in your business. It's on the uh, modules that you're going to see in here. You want to go through the videos and the report on how to operate the expired dialing process in your office. Okay, so that's where this one came from. The um, mortgage uh, right now, currently, as of the time of this filming, we had made it contingent upon a sale, as I said in the intro, and, and we, we it's done. And the numbers came over from the attorney. I'm going to be a few hundred off here, but it's around one hundred fifty-seven thousand three forty. That's the that's the amount of the uh, mortgage balance right now at the beginning of uh, I'm sorry, at the end of December. He's going to make the seller's going to make his generate payment. We're not making a payment until February first. So what does that tell you? That tells you we pick up the first month, which I'll go over in a minute. So that's the purchase. The actual uh, monthly mortgage amount is a nice low one. It's one thousand fifteen and sixty cents. Okay, this is PITI. So this is a nice one to 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 look at. Um, okay, here's what we did to sell this. I'm gonna go to uh, green for money. Um, we sold this for one eighty nine nine. And by the way, uh, this took uh, approximately a month. It's pretty, pretty typical, two to four weeks on the, especially the lower end. So 189.9. You know what? I don't think that's showing up too good for you, but um, I'll say it. I'll say it clearly. So 189.9. Uh, what are the paydays? Well, payday one, ten thousand five hundred down. Now, full disclosure. As I always say, this is a low one because it's a low rent house, but do we get all of the payday ones up front? No, I wish we did. This one, we're getting, I'm going to use rough numbers, we're getting about $6,500 and then we're getting $200 per month for about 24 months. Um, I might be a little bit off, we're getting a little bit lower here, but $200 per month times 24 months plus the upfront, but what does that also tell you what I said earlier. We're not paying the first payment until February 1st, so we pick up January's payment. What do we sell it for if we're paying this? We sold it for $1,400 a month. So payday two is the difference between the mortgage going out and the, and the amount coming in. So that's about uh, $275, $285. $285. We gave this guy a 36 month uh, term. So whatever that comes to, another seven grand or so. Ballpark, you get seven grand, you get ten grand. Ballpark. Uh, let's see. Then on the principal pay down here, it's not huge, but as part of payday three, where you got this difference right here, let's just again use round numbers. You got about thirty-two thousand dollars there, but we already collected ten five, right? So you got about twenty-two k coming at the end, plus principal pay down here of about two hundred a month. Uh, so it's $2,400 a year times 36 months. Now keep in mind, this is a subject too. So will we call the um, buyer up and push them on financing? No. We'll put them through the regular screening. That's our morally and ethically and legally, that's our function. It's our mission is to get these buyers financed. However, on a subject too, there's no reason to call and push them. I'm going to take their time. We give them a 36 month on purpose. So we have 
uh, uh, principal pay down, 200 a month, what did I say, 2,400 times three uh, is 24, three, about 7,200. That's on the back end. Uh, so, so you pick up another 30 grand or so on the back end. So let's do the paydays, guys. Let's see how close I am here in my notes. You got 10, 5, 7, and 30. You got about 40. You got about 50,000. This is actually a little deal for us. <laughs> it's a tiny one because this is usually around 28. This is usually three above three, and this is the back end is usually high. The whole thing usually comes like 70, 73. So it's okay. This is a good deal. And I wanted to show you specifically the subject two. Now, let's talk about subject two a little bit on the, on the, on the buying end. Uh, on the selling end, sorry, on the buyer end. So let's say this buyer has a life event, divorce, death, job reload, they win the lottery, they leave, whatever. Do we care? No, we're not gonna, we're not gonna cry on that one at all because we have this subject two indefinitely. What are some other advantages to subject two when you own the thing versus a sandwich lease? Because we could have done a sandwich lease on this too, right? Well, a few things, think about it. Number one, we'd have to chase the owner to get the deed signed at the end. Three, four, five, however many years it takes, right? I've, I've written some sandwich leases at nine years for people who didn't want to give up the deed. But this guy was willing to do it. He's out of state, military guy, very typical in this area of Connecticut that we're in. Um, other advantages, you get to depreciate this now because you own it. Um, you get to control the insurance because you own it. All these things. Now, here's another little nuance I get asked all the time. This is PITI, we said, right? This mortgage payment? Well, what do you do about the insurance? You're gonna own it. So what we do is this, it's very simple. We call up REI Guard. Uh, it used to be called Affinity. It's on the, uh, it's, on, it's part of your resources here in the modules. We called them up and we said, we're gonna uh, insure this property, okay, they do it, it's pretty much automatic, making sure all your insurance policies are replacement costs, um, so you'd never get caught short if there was a disaster. Um, we then have the certificate of insurance direct billed, uh, sorry, the certificate of insurance, the binder sent to the bank, and we specify with REI Guard direct bill. We then call the bank because we got the escrow and authorization to release letter signed by the seller, giving us permission to talk to the bank. We fax that to the bank. We call the bank and say, we are calling as the management company. We are replacing the insurance policy with a new one, and we make sure everybody's on the same page. So now this PITI continues, it might adjust slightly, but it continues and the insurance is in our name. On the insurance binder, the bank's listed as insured, right? As a lien holder. You're also gonna list the past seller. You have to, they're on the mortgage. And then you're gonna have your company, as far as the bank's concerned, you're the management company, okay? So those are the things I can think about with subject two. Hope that helps. Guys, if you like this, uh, this video and you're seeing it on YouTube, go ahead and check out all the other videos. If you're doing this as part of the modules, as part of the, the, the QLS courses, please check out each one of the deal structure types so you get the same discussion for sandwich, for uh, subject to, and for owner financing. Um, so you understand the different nuances because this could be done either way, all right? Make it a great day. Thanks so much for watching that video. You know, I'm going to try to come out with more and more deal structuring videos so that you know exactly how to navigate the sometimes tricky waters of doing deals all on your terms. That means no cash, no credit, no chasing investors, none of that. You being able to navigate on deals. Now, how would you like to do those deals on your own? like clockwork, every single month, eventually one a week. How would you like to do that? How would you like to be putting those three paydays in your pocket that consistently? Well, there's one way to do it, if you haven't done it yet, and that's to jump on our Quantum Leap System home study program. It's right here below, click the link, grab the QLS. If you're serious about making this year your breakthrough year, you'll be able to do the same deal structuring that we're showing right now. The big difference is, instead of watching, you'll be putting the dollars in your pocket. Hey, be sure to subscribe below as well so you don't miss any of these videos. Uh, look, I don't know if you're gonna take action on the QLS, you should right below here, but if you don't, definitely don't miss any of these videos. Subscribe below and I look forward to seeing you on the future videos. Take care.